Kevin has a heart of gold, and I truly believe that Brooke is looking down and seeing her dad living out her dream and how proud she would be of him. I mean, it's our belief that Brooke prayed for a house. She prayed for a house that would help women. Her own rehab facility. She was going to call it Brooke's house. And it was going to be a house for women that were struggling with substance use disorder. So my wife and I decided that we were going to try to answer Brooke's prayer and fulfill her dream and get her that house. Num uh, num. Yeah, that was a stuffed animal she loved. <laughs> Num num went everywhere with her. Yep. Yeah, that's where we're teaching Brooke. I'm teaching Brooke how to ride a unicycle. Brooke was my, she was my baby girl. We did everything together, and she looked at me as her knight in shining armor, and really was, I was living the dream. As Brooke got older, she started to experiment with drugs. It started with cigarettes, led to alcohol, eventually marijuana. After high school, she started taking pills, and. As soon as she started taking opiates, it was out of control. Kevin thought he knew how to handle it. I, mean, I was a police officer for 30 years, and much of that time I was spent in the drug war and spent on the drug task force. Really, I just believed I was doing God's work. I mean, I felt like handcuffs and incarceration was the answer. When my daughter came to me, I felt like somebody just cut my heart out. I mean, it was a pit in my stomach like I've never felt. Kevin tried to help Brooke fight the addiction, I mean, I was exceptionally proud of my daughter for facing her demons and admitting she had a problem. Brooke went to treatment centers, local drug classes, and even did a stint in jail, leading to a defining conversation with her father. She said she was going to open her own halfway house, her own rehab facility. She was going to call it Brooke's house. And it was going to be a house for women that were struggling with substance use disorder. So I told her if she stayed sober for one year, and she kept taking her drug and alcohol classes. That kid her that house. Brooke never saw her dream come true. We got a call from her sponsor who said Brooke had caught her early in the morning. Brooke had said she relapsed. So her sponsor tried to get her to come home, but Brooke said she could come home because she already embarrassed me enough and disappointed me that she couldn't do that again. So Brooke drove to a nearby church crawled in the back seat of her car and she died there from a heroin overdose. Kevin immediately knew he had to fulfill what Brooke could not. Within a month, we decided we was going to do it, that we were going to try to answer Brooke's prayer and fulfill her dream and get her that house. The Maryland community immediately wanted to help. We had a lot of contractors come forward and say they would donate their services. We had the roof donated, the bricks donated, the drywall donated, the floors donated. Just really people, their hearts were touched and they were ready to step up and do something. After three years of planning, Brooks House officially opened last year. Welcome to Brooks House and we put our logo up on the wall and picture of Brooke. That's why we're all here. With a program designed by Kevin from his experiences with Brooke. She was in and out of five different rehab centers and rarely was I happy at any of them with what was going on, what I seen. So we put a salon in because many of them are coming from active addiction and we like to give everybody a makeover within their first 30 days of arrivals. You know, the other thing at Brooks House that we're trying to do, we're trying to raise the bar, raise the level of respect and dignity that we treat a lady with that's in recovery. So I was adamant that we're not going to have bunk beds and we're not going to have a community shower or community bathroom. We have two girls to a room, but each girl has her own space. She has her own closet. The women are also encouraged to work while at Brooks House. We have a junk removal business. We have a professional dog groomer that works there that she teaches our ladies how to bath dogs and groom dogs. Ah, oh, does that feel good? And then our third social enterprise is where we make chocolate. So you have all those skills to put on a resume, so when you leave our facility, you, you can go out and find a job and you have a purpose in life. Is what the, I think the key to, to beating this epidemic is, is people have to have a purpose in life. So we're here together today for another special occasion. We have a clinical team at the house. We had consultants come in, we visited other treatment centers, and we took the best of everything that we found at other places and put it together for what we have at Brooks House. The transformation these ladies are making from day one to week one to month one is just the most phenomenal thing that I've ever witnessed. Ladies like Kara DeVelbis, 
that emptiness, that void that I always felt is now being filled with spiritual principles like honesty and humility and integrity. Kevin has really loved me back to life. It's an amazing feeling that he's kind of taken me on as a daughter. And to know that he's, he's my dad is a great feeling. It really is. I talk to every lady in the house just like they're my daughter. And I, I give them my advice and I speak from the heart and I tell them what I've been through. And, and I'm praying that they're making the right decisions. I'm there every single day of the week, every night of the week. I have a vision and I want that vision to be carried on so I'm going to stay involved in helping women who are suffering for the rest of my life. That is my, that is now my role in life is I am now going to be helping out women who are struggling. Brooke would be exceptionally proud of what we've been able to put together. <laughs>